Hello everyone. So welcome to the channel of RD Automation Learning. So today we are going to see the automation testing interview questions asked at an at IBM company for a software testing position. This is again from verified source. One of my subscriber who gave the interview in May 2021. So these are the recent latest questions. Okay. So it, they are not in a proper sequence. But as per the recall, uh, we are we are showing these questions to you. So the question is how to select an option from drop down menu in Selenium automation or they might also ask tell us the code for drop down automation. So first of all, uh, as we all know, it is going to be a select class which will be there used for selecting and deselecting an option in a drop down. So we will be passing the web element as a parameter to the constructor and you will be creating the objects of select type. Now there are basically three ways to select a particular option from the drop down menu. One is select by index. It is used to select an option based on its index beginning with zero. Yes, beginning with zero. So this can be, you know, one more sub interview question that might come from them that uh, by which value by what value it would get start so it will be from zero so you can write drop down dot select by index and in the uh, bracket you can add the parameter then select by value that is if i want to select a fruit let's say apple from the list of fruits so i will write drop down dot select by value apple so over here any based on the value attribute you can select then select by visible text so again it is uh, it is based on the text of the option. So again, you can write drop down dot select by visible text. OK, and in the bracket in the double inverted comma, you will be writing the option. Now, which are the various Selenium locators and explain their syntax or give their syntax. So basically, we know there are going to be these nine locators. One is ID, name, link text, partial link text, tag name, class name, dome locator css selector and xpath now let us look at the method syntax and description of each one of them so very first as we saw in the previous slide was by id so we will write driver dot find element by dot id and whichever the id it is there so it will be helpful to locate an element using the id attribute when it comes to name so it will be uh, helpful to locate an element using the name attribute okay and again the syntax is going to be the same driver dot find element my dot name and whichever the name of that object is going to be there then so similarly we have got the syntax for the other uh, methods as well like by class names it will come so driver dot find element by dot class name then driver dot find element by tag name so this will locate an element using the class attribute. This will locate an element using the HTML tag. Then by link text, so driver dot find element by dot link text again it will do. Then whichever the link text is there, so that it will locate a link using link text. Then partial link text is there on the same line. CSS is there. Driver dot find element by dot CSS selector. Then XPath is there. Locates an element using XPath query. Okay. So these are the various selenium locators that we are using in our day-to-day -day selenium automation and uh, if you cannot remember the syntax at least remember the way how it has been used uh, see in all the uh, methods in offer all the locators one thing is common over here i have written driver dot find element you can also write driver dot find elements that will fetch a list of elements while find element is for single thing okay and then whichever by dot the id or the locator it is there directly you can use over there and as the as the method name is there like it is id or name so based on the description you can give that it is used for id attribute or name attribute now even if you uh, i won't tell you to you know uh, learn this like uh, uh, by heart but what you can do is you can create one html page in house into your laptop into your computer just host it into the you know inet manager into your pc so you'll be able to know which are the various tags and which are the methods and then you'll be able to correlate then you don't have to learn 
such kind of answers but then your mind will help you to answer these kind of questions in an interview okay now next question is program to print frequency of each character in java okay let's say if the uh, if the particular you know text the string is automation now in automation word a is repetitively uh, you know frequency of a is twice it is coming two times okay so how will you write the program to print the frequency of each character now let us first understand the algorithm the logic okay so what we are going to do in the program so i have the program also and i have written in the java language similarly based on your you know uh, the cv uh, if you have got uh, c sharp as a programming language expertise or you are writing over there as a python as your expertise in the programming language then they will ask you to write the program in the same language okay so first of all we will what we will do is we will define a string okay then we will define an array frequency with the same size of the string then we are going to use two for loops okay to count the frequency of each character outer loop will be used to select a character and initialize element at corresponding index in array frequency with one while the inner loop will be comparing the selected character with the rest of the characters present in the screen string okay once the match is found every time the element would be incremented in the frequency by one and uh, we we will also be setting the duplicates of selected character by 0 to make sure that we have counted count, counted that particular element okay finally we will display the character and their corresponding frequencies let's say uh, this java is the string so a is repeated with repeated twice so we will we are going to display in the output as j1 a2 and v1 because j is coming once a is coming twice v is coming once okay now let us look at the program over here Okay, I think there is some. Uh, I think the hierarchy of slides has been a bit affected over here. I had written the program over here. Okay, okay. Oh yes, I remember. So basically, the program has been Notepad Spring. I was actually searching in the. ppt because of the length of the program i could not you know uh, paste it into the ppt okay now let us define a simple class with the name as frequency we are writing in java so it would be public static void main string arguments okay this is going to be the string for us picture perfect we can also take java automation any string you can take over there in the interview if they don't tell you the string you can take the string from your uh, mind itself whichever string that you feel you are comfortable with we will define this array we are also you know defining these two variables then as per the logic we will convert the given string into the character array okay and we have got two for loops one for loop is the outer loop and another for loop is the inner loop okay and basically we are setting the string j to 0 to avoid printing the visited character okay and this is the for loop that we are using the outer loop that i was telling in the logic and this is the inner for loop so at the end we will get the system dot out dot print ln as string itself and along with that the frequency okay so over here we are uh, noting p which is coming twice okay e is also coming twice so like that our output will come over here okay okay now let's move to the next interview question okay so next interview question is about the api status codes this is also a very frequently asked question in an ibm interview so which are the various api status codes that you are aware of so it would be uh, one so as as you can see it uh, the api status codes are generally you know in three integer three digits whichever starts with one one xx okay it can be 102 103 and all such so forth so it would be informational status code that is communicates transfer protocol level information 2x means it is successful like 200 okay 
when we say the API response is 200 okay so that means everything is working fine 201 also some of the developers use okay so indicates that the client request was accepted 3x means redirection okay 4x means it is a client error okay 401 is unauthorized 402 403 5x is server error it means internal server error like 500 is coming so all these are the api status codes okay now next uh, question that was asked was test cases of an atm machine okay so when so so see over here uh, in the interview to my subscriber it was asked atm machine it can also be asked a uh, water bottle or an e-commerce website okay so basically they want to know how quickly you can analyze and how much test scenarios you can think of at the runtime in an interview okay so test cases of atm machine so let us start we will first of all verify the type of atm machine if it is completely touch enabled with both the keypad buttons only or both then verify that the user is presented with options when the card is inserted correctly okay let's say card is inserted so whatever the options you will get you want to debit your cash you want to change your password and all these all such options would be displayed then check that no option to continue and enter credentials is displayed to the user when the card is in, in, inserted incorrectly verify the touch if it is a touch machine so verify the touch is smooth and operational Verify the user is presented with the option to choose a language for further operations. Okay, sometimes language options are also coming. So those you have to take care. Then verify that the user is allowed to get account details like available balance. Check that the current amount of money gets withdrawn. Verify uh, you are getting the user. The end user is getting the uh, amount to be entered in the form of multiples of denominations as per the specifications. Verify that the user is prompted to enter the amount again in case if the amount enter is less than the minimum amount configured. Then check that the user cannot withdraw more amount than the total available balance, right? Then check that the user is asked to enter pin number. Then there are, uh, you know, scenario of a limited number of attempts. Then verify that if a total number of incorrect pin attempts get surpassed, then the user is not allowed to continue further, okay? Then check that the pin is displayed in the encrypted form or the, in the mass form. Then verify that the user is presented with different account type options like saving, current, etc. Then verify that the user is provided the option to get the transaction details in the printed form. Then session timeout is maintained. User is not allowed to exceed one transaction limit amount. Then, then user is not allowed to exceed the one day transaction limit amount those options are there then verify that the user is allowed to do only one transaction per pin request so these these things you have to take care okay then these are few of the ui test cases like verify that all the labels and controls including text boxes buttons images and links are present on the screen then check the informative text written displayed on the screen is clearly visible and legible then verify that the size, color, and UI of the different objects are as per the specifications. Okay. Then verify that the application's UI is responsive. It should adjust to different screen resolutions of ATM machines. Okay. So these were all the test cases of test scenarios of ATM machine. Now, in the manual testing question, also they are asking few of the questions. So one of the question is explain defect life cycle. Okay. So it is very easy whenever you are creating a defect the status is new then you are assigning it to the developer so the status would be assigned then the status would remain open then in again from open it might get divided to two options either it is rejected from the developer if it is not meeting the specifications requirements okay or it is deferred then if it is fixed so the status would change to fix then the developer will perform his unit testing okay then the retest would happen again in the retesting there are two options if it is very if it is working fine so you will put it to the verified state or you will reopen it and at the end you will close it so these were few of the questions from the ibm automation testing interview i have also another video which will continue with the same but i don't want to put all the questions in the same video or else it will the length of the video will get increased so i'll also recent i'll uh, 
quickly upload one more video of IBM automation testing interview questions, which will be a part two of this video itself. Okay, and stay tuned for more updates. And please, please do like, share, subscribe my channel, and do put a comment on this video on which all other companies you would like to have the interview questions. Okay, thank you for your time. Thank you.